guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Have a great one today. Um, it's been requested for a while, actually, but I avoided it because Mike Campbell's solo at the end is pretty epic, and uh, but I finally tackled it this week. So uh, we're going to learn how to play Running Down a Dream uh, by Tom Petty and Heartbreaker. So let's... Um, we. This has got some really cool, it's kind of some simple riffs. That intro that I played there, it's kind of combining a couple of riffs. It's not actually played like that on the original recording. It's actually a couple of guitars doing all that. So I'll show you all about that. So I'm going to go through every single riff, and then I'm going to take apart a, a uh, Mike Campbell's killer guitar solo that ends the track um, at the end of this lesson. All right, now before I get into that, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring the notification bell so you'll know when I release a new video. And very important, check out My Guitar Academy, please. Uh, it doesn't take very long. Just click the link in the description below. Uh, my Guitar Academy contains all my guitar courses containing, uh, you know, from a complete beginner course to um, more advanced courses in uh, technique and improvisation and ear training, guitar tone, and many different styles. So um, a lot of theory stuff there too. So please go check it out. We got a great community there. Uh, got a seven day free trial going right now, so I have kind of limited spots, so please check it out and uh, let me know what you think. All right, so let's jump into it. We are in standard tuning here. And um, we basically have Mike Campbell's part, which is this. So it's just a simple riff on the low E string. So. So that's what he's actually doing. So um, we have this open E string, then seven, then open E again, six, open E again, five, open E again, then three, then the open. So it's just that those four notes uh, with that open E starting it and then in between each one obviously ending it. Now, what I was saying that in the beginning when I was trying to play something so you could hear like a chord at the end there. What's going on there, at least live, and is probably pretty close to how it was recorded too, was that chord is actually an E5 power chord played by Tom Petty up here. Dun, 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 dun. So that's just a simple E5 power chord there that, for that underneath that main riff. So really two guitarists to make it sound right. Get that big open ringy chord. And they still have that riff happening underneath it. So we have the open E string there. 7th fret on the A, ninth on the D, ninth on the G, open B, open high E. All right, and then we have the verse, um, which is really kind of started uh, very light chords going on. You can kind of roll back the volume or whatever. It was like, it was a beautiful day. The earth was unstoppable. It had the rain. I was dreaming. So it's the same kind of thing. So you can kind of substitute that E major chord there instead of coming back to the E5. I can see him do that sometimes. You can hear on the recording that there is an E major chord there, especially when it's getting ready to go to the chorus. So we have this E5 chord. And then it goes to a D, pretty much a D power chord. So the open D string, second fret there on the G, and uh, third fret there on the B. And then you can go back to this E5, or you can just do it E major chord. And then you start over. And then we have the chorus, which has an acoustic guitar overdub, and I'm not going to kind of play it on acoustic just for that kind of little simple part. Um, but the chords are pretty much just that. Yeah. 
So now, obviously, there's a little kind of, kind of a more rhythmic acoustic part going on with that. It sounds like this. So you can kind of put it together like that if you want. So this first chord is more, you can kind of hear this F sharp in here every kind of very lightly. But it's not very apparent. It's kind of, so you can play a D major, but it's more of that first chord there that starts the chorus. It's like a D power chord, like the open D string, second fret on the G, and third fret there on the B. So, so you do that, then go to a G major chord. Uh, it's really, I kind of just do a G major bar uh, power chord as well. So I'm not using the note on the A string at all. So it's just a third thread on the low E, open D and G, third fret on the B, and the high E. To an E major chord. So it goes down, And then here is where that acoustic. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Kind of the acoustic guitar comes in there. So it's down, dream. And then we're gonna go back up. So we're gonna start now with the E, back to that G, but this time the, the chord is gonna to go to an A. So E, G, A major chord. So make sure you get that note on the uh, B string, the second fret of the G, B string. And that same rhythm if you wanna add the acoustic rhythm. All right, so we have, the, then it kind of repeats what we just did. All right, then that, that, that main riff again. All right, now underneath that, we're gonna see, um, we kind of go through the, the verse and the chorus again, played the same way. And then we get to this bridge section, which kind of has this riff played again. That kind of going over these chords. So those chords are a couple of uh, suspended second chords. So we can play, you can add the fifth in the bass too to really thicken it up. But really it's a C uh, suspended second chord. So we have this um, kind of bar at the third fret. So you have the third fret on the A, fifth fret on the D, fifth fret on the G, and then that third fret there on the, uh, the B string. So that D is what makes it a sus two chord. So you play that, as you can add that third fret in the low E if you want. But I kind of like it with that. And then just move that shape up two frets to a D sus two. And then end it with the, the this is not a sus two chord, it's just back to that E power chord that we played at the beginning of the song. So. All right, it's kind of got that thing. And that's really going on a lot during the, the outro, the, the solo at the end of the track too. So remember we had this. So it's kind of got those chords going on over the, that riff. Then we go back to the verse and then a chorus played twice as long. So it's just kind of a double chorus. And then back to that main riff. And then that same bridge part we did with the sus2 chord. So it's the same progressions that we've played before. And then we get to this, Mike Campbell's just one of the greatest solos of that era that he, he, he pulls out here. So I'm gonna play through Mike Campbell's solo kind of, and then I'll show you how to play it note for note. Um, and it's, it's a really cool one, just got really cool licks in it. So let me play through it real quick and then we'll take a look at it.
All right, so that has just got some amazing stuff. It just it just keeps going, but it's got some really, really cool cool licks in it. So uh, very blues-based, but there's a couple of uh, tricks that Mike Campbell throws in there that's just like, what is that? Um, so um, we got some cool stuff to cover here. So let's start here at the beginning here with this unison uh, bin. <laughs> So that's just uh, just holding the 12th fret on the high E string and then the 15th fret there on the B string. So you're going to bend up that note on the 15th fret till it matches the note on the high E. Hence their unison. So it's a unison bend. So you can kind of maybe hit that a few times to let that keep ringing. And then he starts picking across them. So when he's picking across it, he starts doing that picking, picking the B string, doing the bend, and then hitting that 12th fret on the high E. So he does that first, and then kind of following the drummer, he goes, so that now is just kind of reversing that. You hit the high E string first, and then do the bend on the B string. And then the last one, you're gonna, instead of bending, you're gonna slide up two frets with some vibrato. So we have this kind of, a, start with the regular unison bend. All right, so, and then we get into this little, little leg where you, All right, so that starts after you're up here at the 17th fret on the, on the uh, B string. Go over to the 17th on the high E string and do a bend and release there. Hold that bend and release. Pull off to 15. And then resolve it there to the, the 17th fret there on the B string. Then it goes back to that top note, the 17th fret on the high E string, and bends it a couple times. And he got that bend with some vibrato. And here's the tricky part. When he leaves this one, he does it by going back to the, uh, doing a pre-bend at the 15th fret on the, on the high E string. And then back over to that 17th fret there. So we have this. So that is tricky to do a pre-bend with your index finger real quick too. And then end it with again, kind of the same thing we did before. So we have this, so we have this, uh, coming out of. All right, next lick sounds like this. All right, so that is gonna, you're gonna move up here to the 17th fret on the B string. Um, you're gonna pick this and slide it down to 12. So, so take that, slide down to 12, and then you're gonna roll across, pick 12 in the high E, and then back to that 12 on the B. into a bend there to 15th fret there on the B string. Now play the 12th fret on the high E string and then back down to the 15 without the bend on the B string. So wait this. Then shift over to the 14th fret on the G string. And right here, we're gonna do a bend at the 14th fret, into the 12th fret on the B string. And then another bend and release at the 14th fret on the G. And you pull off to 12. Over to 14 on the D. Then back, you're gonna, the last three notes, you're gonna go back to the 12th fret on the D, I'm gonna start on the G string. 
and then 14th on the D and 14 on the A. So we have this. Probably want to roll those last two notes. So, sorry. So he does that pretty quick. And then he jumps into a, a really cool little section. Looks like this. All right, so what he's doing here is he's going to start doing, he's barring across the uh, 10th fret on the B and the high E strings. And he's going to pick the 10th fret there on the B, hammer on 12, and then pick um, the 10th fret on the high E string. He lets the notes kind of bleed together a little bit too, so don't worry about if you don't have this great note separation. It kind of, he's going for that effect. Instead of going separating the notes with a roll or something like that. It sounds actually sounds a little bit better if you just leave that bar and let it hang out. So he does this three note lick repeated. So picking the B, hammer 12, and then pick 10 on the high E string. Do that like about eight times. And then what you're gonna do is hit the tens across the B and the high E and slide them up to the 12th fret. And you actually hear a quick little pull off from the 15th fret on the high E string to the 12th fret on the uh, high E. But it just happens once. And then we get into the new three note uh, lick, which is gonna be the 12th fret on the high E, and then pull off. You're gonna pick 15 on the B and pull off uh, 12. You can use your pinky and whatever, or your ring finger. So that's the three note lick now, that's repeated. And then when you finish it, you're going to resolve it from sliding 15 up to 17. So we have this. All right, so that, that's a really cool part of it, really kind of a dramatic section of it. Um, and so, so far we kind of had this, I'll slow it down a little bit. From there, we have this. All right, so we start here at the 15th fret there on the high E string uh, with a bend there. Kind of a, you kind of release it and go down to 12 a couple times. And then a couple of bends. And then this time you resolve it over at the 12th fret on the B string. So we have this. All right, and now we have this lick a little bit tricky like this. So we're going to start with a hammer on from 12 to 15 on the B. And then over to 12 on the high E string, back to 15 on the B. And then you're going to bend up that 15, that last 15 we just hit. 
and then it's kind of an oblique bend where you're going to be doing that bend on the uh, on the B string, and then pick that 15 on the high E, and then pick the 15 on the B string again and release it. So we have this uh, um, kind of. And then, when you release that bend, you're going to then pick the 12 on the high E string. And then back to the 15. And it's kind of a, a bend and release and back a bend again on the 15th fret of the B string. And then you're going to pick 12 on the high E, down to 12 on the B. So we have uh, from the... And when you get to that 12 on the B string, actually hit that note twice. So this is a, this is the, probably the most little kind of intricate little lick he does. So. Now from there we have this. And it's kind of, I, I think that's where that is. So uh, after that, you do that bend in the 14th fret that we did earlier, back over to the 12 on the G, and then another bend and release of the 14, down to 12 on the G, and then 14, 12, 14 on the G. So that's really the end of the lift. And then from there, so that is just kind of hitting the double stops to the 12th fret uh, on the cross of G and the B string. You can come back and hit the kind of a muted 14th fret on the, on the D string if you want, but just those 12s really sounds fine. And then that little section is going to be ended. So that's just a hammer on 14, 12 to 14 on the G, then 12 on the B, 12 on the high E, and then, and then slide from 15 to 17 on the B string. All right, next section sounds like this. So that's pretty simple. It's just double stops here at the 12th fret on the high E string uh, and the B string together. And then some. So that's the double stops. You're going to play the 14th fret on the G and the B together. You need to pick them, kind of bend them towards the floor a little bit. And then down to the, tw the double stops on the, the 12th fret across the G and the B. And then kind of do that a couple times. And resolve it there to the uh, 14th fret there on the D. And then we get finally to the uh, the next section, which is like I think the coolest lick of the entire, very unique uh, little lick he does here. It sounds like this. So that's very cool. So we're gonna. Start with that same unison bend that we started the solo with, that the 12th fret on the high E and the 15th fret there on the B. And then what he does is he starts basically a, a three note lick where he's going to, as he has that note, up, he's going to pick the, play the 15th fret there on the, keep the bend there on the B string, pick the 15th fret on the high E, pull off to 12 and then pick 15 on the B string again. And that's a lick. So that note's bent on the beat. So you start doing that with the, and then slowly release the bend. This sounds really, really cool.
it's just it sounds it's tr really tricky to play exactly like he does. Um, but the sound of it's just got this kind of like soaring kind of like almost like a siren or whatever. It's just really really cool. So just a three note lick repeated, and you, you got to work it out so you can do, do that pull off and keep picking the note on the B string and slowly release that bend. So control that bend releases. Well, that, after that, he could, you could slide up to 15 or just do a bend. It might be a bend there at the 15th, actually, after that little section. And then we have this. So that's a, you can do the bend. I think I did the slide earlier, but the bend probably makes more sense. And then um, pick it again and release that bend, and then play 12 on the B, and then play 14, 12 on the G. And then uh, 14 on the uh, D. So I think I may have missed two notes in there. So you do that bend, and then release it and play the 12. And then I think you pick across it again. 15, 12, 14, 12. The D, there it is. So I think I missed that first, that second 15, 12. So. It's, And then we have the end of the solo before the fade out. It looks like this. All right, so that's that same lick, that little three note hammer on lick, that, the 10th fret there. So play 10, hammer on 12, and then play 10 on the high E string, repeat it. He does this a little bit slower here and just a few times. And then he just starts taking double stops up the string. So we had this 10th fret. And he kind of slided into the 12s across the B and the E. And then up to the 15. And then up to the 17. And then that last lick's the same lick we did here. But he's hammering 17 to 20 on the B. And then playing 20 on the high E. So, and then he ends it, it starts fading out right here when he does that bend at the 20th fret on the B. Um, really, from there, you can just kind of keep going, improvising in an E minor pentatonic. Uh, until you want to end the track, whatever way you want. But it is a fantastic solo by Mike Campbell. It's a, it's a cool song. It's a simple song. It's got a really nice hook to it. Um, but for really, really what kind of takes it off the charts is Mike Campbell's solo there. Um, it's just really one of the best ones of, of that era. So I'm glad I finally got to cover it. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for GuitarLessons365.com.